Alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusna wa min sayyati amalina man jahdihi lahu fala mudila lahu wa min yudlil fala hadiyya lahu wa ashahadu ala illaha illa allahu wa dahu la sharika lahu wa anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu Surely the perfect praise belongs to Allah. We praise him. We seek his aid. We seek his forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and our own bad deeds. Whosoever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whosoever Allah leaves, leaves astray. No one can guide. I openly bear witness that there is no God but Allah, the one having no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. Allah tells us in the Quran, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladhina aminu taqu laha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutuna illa wa antum muslimun. O you who believe, Regard your duty to Allah in truth as it should be regarded and do not die except that you submit to Allah as Muslims. So we thank Allah for this day of Jummah. We thank Allah for waking us for the best day of the week. It is the best day of the week because we are assembled for Jummah. And we thank Allah for another opportunity, another breath to show our gratitude our thanks to him for making us Muslim. It is indeed a mercy and a blessing from Allah as salam the perfection, the giver of peace. And we pray and we strive so that others are guided to this mercy and to this blessing. Allah tells us in the Quran, wal asr, short, simple, means by the passage of time, or by the token of time, through the ages, is somehow, sometimes how it is translated. The word for time is asr. It is also the name of one of the five obligatory prayers. And Allah tells us in the Quran, solati wa solatil wa Observe the prayers, especially the middle prayer, and stand in true devotion to Allah. Asr is that middle prayer. 
there was a little bit of confusion amongst the Sahaba about what that middle prayer was when the revelation came down to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Wasallam. Ali radiallahu anhu said he thought it was Fajr. He was thinking that Maghrib and Isha were two and then the middle one would be Fajr and then Dhuhr and Asr after that. But our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Wasallam clarified it and said the middle prayer is the Asr prayer. The afternoon prayer. Allah tells us to guard our prayer, especially that middle prayer. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, He who observes Fajr and Asr will, etern will enter paradise. Now we understand the significance of Fajr. Breaking your sleep to pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But what about Asr? Asr means literally age or time. It means afternoon. It means history. It means succession of ages. It means also the passing of time. And more importantly for this khutbah, it means time that can never be recaptured. The Asr prayer is important because it's in the middle of your work day. Or for those people who are not working, it's in the middle of your relaxation time. The time we are most likely to miss and not make up because we're too busy. Allah tells us in this surah, Allah says mankind is in loss. A brother told me it resonated with him when someone translated it as mankind is a loser. Except, except for those who believe. Those who have al-iman, the belief the proper belief, the proper conviction. When you believe in Allah, and you believe in the prophets and the messengers, and you believe in the angels, and you believe in the books, and you believe in the last day, and you believe in the qadr of Allah, the power or the decree of Allah, when human beings properly believe, then they do right. They know what is right. And when you know better, you do better. You do what is right. Your righteous deeds make you right. They make you righteous. When you are righteous, you enjoin righteousness. You try to embody righteousness. You want to be around righteousness and righteous people so that they keep you righteous. Your righteousness and their righteousness are reciprocated. You exchange what is right and what is true. Many truths that I convey in these khutbahs or in the talims don't come from my own studies. But people send these things to me. They saw fit to pass that knowledge to me and I to thee. The qualities of your friends and your acquaintances rub off on you. And your qualities rub off on them. The God-conscious human being, the God-conscious, the People with taqwa know that this life is a test and it is all in the plan of Allah as a wajib. So they have understanding and contentment. They have sabr, patience, and perseverance. Some people are born with patience. Some people learn patience. A brother told me, you ask Allah for patience and he gives you children. That's what this ayah is about, though. It is a reciprocity, talking about righteousness and truth and patience, that it is reciprocated. But Allah says, back to this, that man is lost. That's all, that always scares me, especially this short surah. Allah swears by time, us, because it is time that cannot be recaptured. Time is the measurement between two events. The main event of human beings' lives is their birth and their death, their death, that hash mark in between. In between those two main events, in the middle is asr, time that cannot be redone or recaptured. We don't have reincarnation in Al-Islam. We don't have a life after this life after this life. You have today and hopefully 
inshallah, tomorrow. So actually, the time in between your birth and your death is the most important time for you. It is who we really are. We remember every day our birthday. Rarely do we think about our end day. Since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala leaves that in suspense, today, right now, this second is the time for you to get right with your rub. Our purpose is to worship and serve Allah. Think of your time today, what you've been doing today, or what you did yesterday. Was it in fulfilling that purpose in service to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? There are three things that we can be doing. We can be doing good deeds, bad deeds, or things that are inconsequential. Maybe you are relaxing. Maybe you are getting some entertainment. But if you have too much or spend too much time in those things that are inconsequential, they become consequential. There was a story of a king. He gathered all of his people together. And he said, I will give a chest full of gold to whomever has the greatest feat, whoever performs the most amazing feat. So everyone clamored together, trying to do their magic tricks. Some could jump far, some could run fast. One man had his friend go 50 yards out and hold up a needle. Now the crowd is in great suspense. They're anticipating, what is this man going to do? The man stands still, then he grabs a thread, and he throws the thread 50 yards through the eye of the needle. Everybody is ecstatic. They're clapping and cheering. And the king himself is amazed. He brings the man to him and says, this is quite an amazing feat. How long did it take you to master this? The man said, I've been practicing it, and I mastered it after 30 years. The king said, you have won the treasure. And he also commanded the man be given 100 lashes for wasting 30 years of his life. The moral of the story is to use our time wisely. The people of Thamud, the ancient Arab people, they were sent a prophet named Sully. He warned them to shun their gods, shun their ways, and worship Allah alone. They said, we will, but only if you show us a sign. In other words, give us a miracle. And when we read in the Quran, when people ask Allah as a wajal for a miracle through the prophet, it is almost always given a strict warning. If I perform this miracle or show this sign that you ask for and you persist in your disbelief, your punishment will be severe. But they persisted. They insisted. They asked that Sully make a camel from the mountain that's in their land. Sully, alayhi salam, asked Allah for this. And Allah gave him permission to make this camel from the mountain. And the, mountain, and the camel came from the mountain fully in the flesh. Some of the people believed and followed Sully, alayhi salam, but some of them, most of them, did not believe. Allah provided the exact proof that they asked for, and they still did not believe. Not only that, but they tried to kill the camel that Allah had provided for them. Allah says, Wa and in the story of Thamud was another lesson when they were told, enjoy yourselves for a while. The word here for time or a while is hin. It means a specific period of time or a space of time. These rebellious people not only disbelieved, they tried to kill the miracle that they asked for. So when Sully, alayhi salam, said, enjoy yourselves for a time or for a while, they didn't take him seriously. In fact, they tried to kill Sully, alayhi salam. 
Remember Allah says, enjoy yourselves for a while. Do you know what a while is? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These people were going about their business, living their lives, eating, drinking, gambling, doing whatever. Allah gave them three days, 72 hours. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed all of them in three days except for Sully and his few followers. So we do not know when our time is, whether it's going to be 30 days, 30 years, 30 months, or three days. It is an encouragement to do what's right and be right before your Lord immediately, today, at this Juma. At the end of Juma, we ask for our forgiveness over and over and over again, like our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. But better yet, let us stop now and ask Allah for forgiveness. Alhamdulillah Rabbi Al-Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ayya sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sabihi wa man wala ajma'in. The perfect praise belongs to Allah, the guardian evolver of all systems of knowledge. May Allah's blessings and peace be bestowed upon our noble leader Muhammad sallallahu wa sallam, upon his family, upon his companions, upon his followers, all of us all together, all over the world. Now think about it for a moment. We collectively stopped and asked Allah as a wajal for our forgiveness. Who does that religiously but those who sincerely believe in God and take him seriously and take our lives seriously and take our deeds seriously? When we do this, we are following in the footsteps of Adam salam, and his wife Hawa. They together beg for Allah's forgiveness. And we turn to Allah as our parents did. Most people don't think this way or live in this way or care at all in the society that we live in. We are different from them. Allah says in the Quran, وَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَوْ لَا أَنزَلَ عَلَيْهِ أَيَّاتُ مِنْ رَبِيهِ قُولُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُدِيلُ مِنْ يَشَاءُ وَحَدِّ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ أَنَّبْ The disbelievers say, if only a sign could be sent down to him from his Lord, just like the people of Thamud said, they're talking about, they're talking about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that a sign come down. And the law commands the Prophet to say, indeed Allah leaves, leaves. I mentioned this at the beginning of the khutbah. It is also translates, Allah lets go to, lets go to stray whomever he wills, or leaves to stray, and guides whomever turns to him. First thing that we should get from this ayah is the disbelievers are receiving the Qur'an, receiving the recitation. They ask for a sign, just like the people of Thamud, and they receive it immediately. Allah is giving them the recitation, a miracle, a sign filled with other signs. It says that the disbelievers ask something, and then the Prophet Muhammad wasallam is dictated by Allah to say something. So there is a communication going on. And they have the audacity to say, send down a sign. Allah sends it to them and they still do not believe in it. The dialogue with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a sign and a miracle within itself. And Allah says something that I wanted to highlight, but oftentimes Muslims misunderstand. Allah leaves to stray whomever he wills. They went astray already. 
He doesn't lead them astray. He leaves them astray. Their mind state, their thinking takes them to the wrong path. So Allah is not to blame for their wrong path. Allah abandons them for leaving the path, and that is their punishment. Moreover, Allah gives all of us the same signs. Some of us ignore them. Some of, the, some of us are oblivious to them. Some of us accept them, and some of us deny the signs of Allah. Our life is in our own hands, Allah tells us. And when, and even if we sent down to them angels, and the dead had spoken to them, and we had gathered together all the things before their eyes, they would not believe, unless Allah will, but most of them behave ignorantly. They are so far gone that no amount of truth can get through to them. And more importantly, at the end, Allah says he guides whoever turns to him. In another place, Allah says, Alladina aminu wa ta wa tat ma'inu kulu bihum bi dhikri lahi ala bi dhikri lahi tat ma'inu kulub. Those who believe and whose hearts find comfort in the remembrance of Allah, surely in the remembrance of Allah do hearts find comfort. Sometimes it's translated, those who believe, whose hearts find satisfaction in the remembrance of Allah. For without doubt and remembrance of Allah do hearts find satisfaction. We find comfort and satisfaction in remembrance, in thinking of Allah. He guides our lives, and we are content in the plan and purpose of Allah. Allah says, those who believe and do good, for them there will be tuba, a bliss. Some people translate it as a blessing and an, and an honorable destination. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked to explain tuba, or this blessing. He says, tuba is he who saw me and believed in me. Tuba and another tuba and another tuba is for those who believe in me who did not see in, see me. That's all of us here. We get a blessing plus a blessing plus another blessing for believing even though we don't see him. So someone asks, what is this tuba? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, a tree in paradise whose width is a hundred, year, hundred years and the clothes of the people in paradise are taken from its bark. This is our reward for believing and using our time in this life for righteousness. There was a sheikh who stood before his class and he had some items in front of him. Before the class began, he pulled out a large empty jar and proceeded to fill it with golf balls. And he asked the students, is this jar full? And they all say, yes, it was full. Then the sheikh picks up a box of pebbles and pours it into the jar and shakes it lightly and the pebbles roll down in between the golf balls. Then he asked his students again, is the jar full? And they said, yes. The sheikh then picked up a box of sand and poured it into the jar. Of course, the students saw it being filled. He asked them, is this jar filled? And they said, yes. Then the sheikh brought two glasses of water and poured them into the jar, effectively filling the empty space between the sand. And the students laughed. Now, said the sheikh, when the laughter calmed down, I want you to recognize that this jar represents your life. The golf, ball, the golf balls are the most important things. Allah, your family, your children, your health, your friends, your favorite passions. And if everything else was lost and all you had remaining was these things, your life would still be full. The pebbles are the other things that matter, like your job, your house, your car. 
The sand is everything else, the small things. Facebook, social media, movies, television, basketball, football. If you put the sand into the jar first, the sheikh said, there is no room for the pebbles or for the golf balls. The same goes for your life. If you spend all of your time and your energy on small things, you will never have room for the most important things. Pay attention to the things that are critical to your happiness. Spend time in service of Allah. Spend time with your children. Spend time with your parents. Visit your grandparents. Take your spouse out to dinner. There will all be, always be time to clean your house or mow the lawn. But take care of the golf balls first, things that are most important. Set your priorities straight. The rest is just sand. Then one student raised his hand and said, what about the water? What does that represent? The Sheikh smiled and said, I'm glad you asked. The water just shows you that no matter how full your life seems to be, there is always room for more. So let, let us ask Allah that we use our time wisely in remembrance of Allah and the most important things. Remembering Allah and our family, friends, and let those small things fall to the wayside. Hakeem al -Sayyid. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashahadu an la ilaha illallah, ashahadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashahadu an Muhammad an Rasulullah, ashahadu an Muhammad an Rasulullah. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala salah. Hayya ala salah, hayya ala salah. Qad taqamit al-salah, qad taqamit al-salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah. Lines of straight. <clears throat> Allahu Akbar. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbi Alameen. Rahman Rahim. Malik Yawmadeen. Iyaka na abudu wa iyaka na stain. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Sirat al ladina an amta alayhim. Wairu al magdubi alayhim. Walad dolim. Wal asr. In all insana lafi kusr. Illa al ladina aminu wa amilu salihati wa tawasa bil haqqi wa tawasa bil sabr. Allahu akbar. Semi Allahu lemi alhamida. Allahu akbar. Allahu akbar. Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillah Rahim Malik Iyaka na abudu wa iyaka na stain. Ihdina sirat al mustaqim. Sirat al ladina an amta alayhim. Wairu al magdubi alayhim. Walad dolim. Amen. Kul laudu bi rabbin nas, malikin nas, ilahin nas. Min sharil waswasil khan nas. Ulladi waswasu fi sudur al-nas Min al-janati wal-nas Allahu Akbar Sami Allahu Namin Hamida 
الله اكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Brothers and sisters, don't forget your uh, zakat obligations. Um, if you uh, want to do Cash App, it is dollar sign M W S A L A A M. For those who want to mail it in or who are looking online to mail it in, it's 614 West 35th Street, North of Virginia 23508, or P.O. Box 8, I mean 1802, North of Virginia 23501. I'll be here tomorrow and Sunday, inshallah, to open for Fajr prayer. I'll be here about 5.15. Uh, tomorrow we will resume the art class, inshallah. The uh, uh, art instructor here is, is feeling better, alhamdulillah. So we, we will have that tomorrow. It is free and open to the public. We have uh, great fun doing it, so we're asking everybody to come out, bring, your, bring yourselves, bring your children, bring your grandchildren. We have a lot of fun. Um, There'll also be Talim at one o'clock on Sunday. This week is it the um, is it Imam Rashid? Rashid. Yeah, Imam Rashid is this uh, Sunday at ten thirty on our revival of the religious sciences. Sunday at ten thirty, so please uh, come and attend as well. He has a wealth of knowledge that we are learning from uh, Imam Ghazali. It is a uh, great just listening to it and him um, mm -hmm. uh, exchanging ideas. So please come out if you can. I uh, won't we'll have. Um, I won't be here for a Maghrib and Isha tonight. Some things going on at my house. But um, we should be still here for Asa um, after, after this um, prayer. Uh, there are snacks in the, um, in the back as well as um, tuna sandwiches and bean soup. Bean soup. Yeah, so um, please go back and uh, patronize there uh, for donations. It's not more like any. What else? Yeah. We yes. have our pledge sheets available yeah. for our acquisition of the building next door. We're looking to raise $150,000. Jump on it. Jump on it. Y'all hear that? <laughs> we have a pledge. We're making pledges. Everybody individually making pledges to the master so we can acquire the building next door. Uh, we have some plans for that to be, um, to be um, up and running. So please help and assist if you can. Um, we have this, the sheets if you're interested in just... Um, Ask the uh, treasurer or myself, and we can get them to you. Um, but yes, we're trying to expand, and we want to expand. So please help us if you can. Um, I think that's it. Next week, um, there we'll probably have a janaza. Um, I'll even have a meeting. Never mind. Excuse me. It's a meeting, not a. Not a it's a, a private meeting. So never mind. Sorry. It's not one of the. Airport. <laughs> 